Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game Scratch, and today we are talking about GitHub Copilot X. Now, this is a next generation of GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot first launched in June of 2022, so almost a year ago at this point in time, and it's amazing how much the world has changed since then. Now, this is ultimately based on ChatGPT. It was a partnership between Microsoft, GitHub, and OpenAI, and it started off as kind of like you wrote a comment and then it turned it into code. And I'm going to show you the most spectacular fail this happened early on. So what you see here is you just wrote a comment, write me a fast inverse square root. Now, this is a famous algorithm. I think it's from Quake itself. And you can see this is sort of like when, uh, was it Dally or Stable Diffusion got caught just straight out copying the uh, logo for um, Getty Images? Well, this is similar. You see it just straight out pulled the code off of GitHub and just copy pasted it. So uh, early AI was definitely a lot, we'll just say it was a lot less obvious about its plagiarism if it is in fact still plagiarizing. So early on, there were definitely some issues with Copilot X, but what we found since then, and I did a video on this uh, about a month or two ago called uh, the Ultimate Godot Tutor, Tutor, and I showed you how you could use ChatGPT3 to do um, uh, have it generate code for you. Well, now we have ChatGPT4, and Copilot X has obviously been upgraded with ChatGPT4, and it's got a ton of features and functionality here. It's also called Copilot Space X because Copilot is going to be doing a lot of things. You can have Copilot Chat, you can have Copilot uh, for the command line. We'll get back to that in just a second, and so on. So here are some of the examples of what you can do now with Copilot X. So it's got this persistent chat interface. So it's going to remember what you asked it, and it's going to respond accordingly to the previous conversation you had. If you checked out GPT-4 yet, you already kind of have an idea how this works. If not, I'll show you it in just a second. Uh, so what you see here is you can write a unit test code for the selected code. So you select your code over here and say create me a unit test works for me frankly I hate writing unit tests so this is the kind of functionality that I do actually like to see uh, but again it is context aware the conversation so if you have a follow-up question you can ask it so if you're stuck on a problem you can ask it to explain something you can copy someone else's code in and ask copilot to explain what is happening here you can copy error free code in or error code in and have Copilot fix it. It's pretty nuts what we're going to be able to do. Again, all this stuff is sign up for, get it later, so on. You can actually check out Copilot X today. This functionality, I believe, is all available. Uh, it's $15 a month. And you know what? In a lot of cases, that's an easy sell, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what's getting interestingly here, too, is you can ask it about the world's most challenging <laughs> programming problem. How do I center a div vertically? And literally, if you've ever done any coding in the world of CSS, you will run into this. And here is the answer, how it works. The cool thing here also is what you can do, again, on a wait list, so this is a product coming soon, where you can load content, you can point it at someone's documentation, have it learn from that documentation, and then ask it questions about that documentation. So, so let's say uh, there is a new version of Godot out, they publish your documentation, you can point Copilot at that documentation and Copilot will basically grok that documentation and be able to give you answers. That is pretty nutty. Uh, so if there is written documentation for anything, you can sick copilot on it and have it help you out. Um, and then we've got uh, pull requests and have it automatically generate the pull request for you. Now you may be wondering at this point in time, all right, so it can fix code, uh, it can do pull requests for codes, it can do test cases for code, and it can make code on your suggestion. Uh, so why can't it just do all of these things uh, and the answer is probably it can. It's just they know that a one-click programming solution is going to scare people off. But we're getting closer and closer to that stage. But uh, it's the evolution. It's just basically changing the way we program. So there's a lot less typing of code and the, the grunt and details and more of expressing what you want the computer to do. So it's just going to it's gonna change the role of a programmer. And this one's also really nice. There's also the ability, again... Join the waitlist coming soon. Uh, this is Copilot for CLI. CLI being command line interface. That's just an umbrella term for terminal or uh, PowerShell or command prompt, whatever. Uh, and it's going to be able to assist you right in your shell doing commands and scripting. Here you can see an example over here. Use FFmpeg to add a watermark to input.mp4. And then it will create the actual command for you. Uh, so obviously it's out there reading all the man pages for these various sort of things. It knows how to, to do these things and layer them together, etc. cetera. Uh, it explains what all of the parameters are. And then the best part here by far and away is that then it prompts you if you wish to run it. I also do believe there is a vocal interface. So you're going to be able to do your programming in Copilot completely by telling it what to do, which is absolutely nutty.
study. Uh, but this one, there is a prompt here, so you can't just walk by someone's desk and say, delete all the files on drive C, run this command, and then just run away laughing. Because, you know, first off, you're a bit of an asshole. And second, they've at least thought that through. The command just doesn't instantly run. It prompts you, okay, is what you asked for actually what you want me to run? Yes or no? Uh, and then it goes ahead and deletes your whole hard drive. So I actually think that this uh, GitHub CLI, uh, Copilot CLI, I think that's actually pretty interesting because I, I don't use the CLI that much anymore. So when I do, I am looking up documentation a lot. Now I don't have to anymore. Uh, so that is Copilot X. Again, the star of the show behind all of this is ChatGPT4. And if you do not want to pay GitHub $15 a month, but you want to check out ChatGPT4, what you want to do, and this sounds weird. I've never said this in my life. You want to check out Bing. <laughs> yes. The best and easiest way to use chat GPT-4 right now is Bing. Uh, and if you sign up for Bing, there is a bit of a waiting list, but I think it's almost instant now. Uh, I also think they're forcing you to use Edge, but I'm not 100% certain there. Uh, but once you've got it, you can do these conversations. So it has the conversation aware uh, logic. So we could do things like, and, and if you've never seen chat GPT coding in action before, this is pretty scary. And apparently chat GPT-4 is quite a bit more up to date and better than chat GPT-3 was. All right, so it's demo time. Let's do uh, in the Godot game engine using GD script. Uh, I want to create a cube named Bob with a rigid body attached. That doesn't technically make sense in the Godot game engine simply because you don't really have entities or components or anything, but it should be able to refer from there. So that's going to go ahead. Here it's creating my code to create a new cube. So here it did, made a new mesh instance, cube mesh new. Uh, I don't, yeah, okay. So it made a cube, added this bob, created a rigid body, added it to it. Yep, yeah, so that's it. So now here's where the chat part comes in. Uh, now I want to apply uh, physics impulse of zero, oh sorry, zero comma minus 10 comma zero two, and it should remember what Bob is. So let's see, because again, it's a context aware, so it knows the questions I asked earlier on. So now it knows, okay, here we go, and it just, boom, there is the code to do it, and you just kind of keep, um, keep asking more and more complex. So, so let's say uh, a uh, user clicks on Bob. I want to play a wave audio file named Doug. And let's go ahead and run that. And you can see, I do think that there is a fixed limit of 15 back and forth questions. And here you can see, again, the, the big thing going on here is there is an awareness. So it knows about Bob in the past and just kind of keeps building on it. it it's actually just outright impressive how much GPT-4 knows. Uh, it should even now be more current and up to date, so it should understand Godot 4, for example. But of course, I'm just using Godot as an example here. Uh, I could say, uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do, press this little button here, and we basically start a new conversation. Uh, so in the Unity game engine, uh, how do I play a sound when the level opens? Just throwing something out there randomly. And I don't know if I'm getting code results here or if I'm gonna get search results. I didn't actually ask for so. So here it's gonna give me basically instructions step-by-step step on how to do things. Um, now I can say it's context where So now I can follow it up. And again, it remembers the original question. So it takes that, boom, goes with the code. So you have this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, this is going to ultimately be built into Copilot X. Uh, and it's, I don't think it will have these limitations in it any longer. And on top of that, you can also use source code as input. So basically, again, I can say, write a unit test for this. Actually, here, let's do this now. Uh, so write, oops, the other right, write a unit test for the code you just generated. And off to the races it goes. And there's your unit test. So you're getting most of the functionality uh, that 
you're going to get from Copilot. So Copilot is going to be built directly into your IDE. Uh, it's going to be more code aware. Uh, and this, honestly, it, it is the future. Now, again, the beginning version, it was very janky in its answers. Now it's getting better. Uh, is it just brazenly stealing its knowledge from other people's code? Almost assuredly. Is this a good thing? Probably not. Is this how we're going to program in the future? Most definitely. Do I like this better? I don't know. And I'm questioning you. What do you think of this? By the way, if you're an Unreal Engine developer, in Unreal Engine, uh, how do I play a sound when the level loads using blueprints? It's now it's not actually smart enough to draw a blueprint graph, which would be just mind boggling amazing, uh, but it does as you're going to see right here, know how to use it. It gives you step-by-step -step on how to set the graph up and all the nodes are there. So it doesn't matter what engine you're working with. ChatGPT4 is there for you. And if you want directly integrated into your environment, ChatGPT, oh, sorry, uh, Copilot X uh, is basically ChatGPT4 IDE edition with some extra code awareness tools. And then we've got it refined again later on coming in for things like working from the command line, uh, doing pull requests, and so on and so forth. Which again, that is why the underscore X, uh, so not underscore, but the space X part of the name is because chat, uh, God, I keep saying that, um, Copilot X is ultimately going to be a series of products. But if you want to go ahead and check out the chat right now, you can pay 15 bucks a month. If you do not want to pay $15 a month and you're fine with copying and pasting, uh, you could get most of the same experience uh, by signing up for Bing. And yeah, you got to sign in. So uh, there was a small wait list. I got in within two days of applying and I think they've made it shorter. So if you do want to check out chat GPT four right now, the best way is Bing or pay your 15 bucks a month and co-pilot. It will integrate it directly into your IDE. And I think the tooling is still the same. So it's supported in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, uh, the various different IntelliJ um, or um, JetBrains browsers such as IntelliJ or uh, Project Rider, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can definitely integrate it directly into your coding experience. And if you use it, even just 15 bucks a month to not have to copy and paste between different environments is probably worth it. This is, this is staggering technology. Uh, is it good for the world? I don't know, but it is definitely staggering technology. And I ask a question to you. What do you think of all of this? Are you afraid as a programmer or are you excited as a programmer? Because that is ultimately the question. And to that answer, I will say, I personally do not know. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.